Many of the stories on this channel deal with scammers preying upon unsuspecting victims like the elderly, the lonely, and just your ordinary everyday people. But the scammers in today's story set their sights on an even bigger target, the US government. And they weren't interested in stealing hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. They were interested in stealing billions of dollars. This scam first appeared in the mid 1990s in Miami. The sucker of the scam, Medicare. You see, Medicare, the national health insurance program providing insurance primarily for Americans age 65 and older, has blind spots and often pays insurance claims without checking them first. That's mainly because Medicare is this gigantic system receiving millions of claims per day, each one dealing with patient conditions and a doctor's decision for how they treat them. By law, Medicare must pay out most of those claims within 30 days. With so many claims coming in, it's extremely difficult for them to filter out legitimate claims versus fraudulent claims, and seldomly do they have a live person investigate a claim in detail before it's paid out. Scammers have been well aware of Medicare's limitations for years, which is why they came up with the perfect device to milk them for millions. Motorized wheelchairs. This is how the scam worked. Criminals disguised themselves as medical supply companies and would create bogus claims saying they provided expensive wheelchairs to Medicare patients who, in reality, didn't need a wheelchair at all. The scammers then asked Medicare to pay them back and would pocket the huge markup that the government paid on each chair. So a fraudster might supply an $840 power wheelchair to a patient, put in a claim with Medicare, and be reimbursed nearly $5,000 netting around four grand in profit. But why was Medicare paying so much for each wheelchair? At the time, Medicare would set its payments for power wheelchairs based on a manufacturer's suggested retail price. But as the years went by and the prices of those power wheelchairs came down in price, Medicare was slow to adjust their price so it would basically stay the same. So they were still paying much higher than what the wheelchair was worth, allowing scammers to make a huge profit on each of these chairs. One scammer testified to making $20,000 in a single day. The entire scheme was dependent on acquiring as many Medicare patients as possible. These fake medical supply companies would hire professional recruiters called marketers who would go out and round up seniors on Medicare. The marketers would either convince them that they needed a wheelchair, entice them by saying the government was providing free wheelchairs for a limited time only, or just flat out bribe them. Once the senior agreed, the marketer would obtain their Medicare ID number and the scam could go forward. These fake medical supply companies were also buying off corrupt doctors or just stealing the identities of doctors who had recently passed away. By the early 2000s, the wheelchair scam spread from Miami to Houston and skyrocketed. For example, in one particular Houston county in 2001, Medicare had paid for only 3,000 power wheelchairs. In 2002, just a year later, it paid for 31,000. Is that because in just one year, 28,000 more people in that area weren't able to walk? Probably not. From Houston, the scam then branched out to Louisiana, Arkansas, and California. Nationwide, there was a giant spike in wheelchair claims. According to one study, in 1994, only one in 9,000 people receiving Medicare got a new wheelchair. By 2000, it was one in 479. By 2001, it was 1 in 362, and by 2002, it was 1 in 242. But not only was there this huge suspicious jump for Medicare patients suddenly needing wheelchairs, the reason for why they needed a new wheelchair seemed to be getting less urgent than in previous years. Prior to the scam exploding, most prescriptions for power wheelchairs were written for patients with serious illnesses like Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis. But as the scam grew, many of the claims coming in were for patients who had common conditions like arthritis or back pain. In 1998, it was evident that Medicare knew about the existence of the wheelchair scam because they put out a national fraud alert recognizing it. And over the next decade, they would continuously change the rules and attempt to make it more difficult for scammers to cheat the system. However, in 2012, roughly one in 235 people on Medicare were still receiving wheelchairs which was about the same rate as 2002 when the scam was flourishing. So in an entire decade, not much had changed. So why didn't Medicare do more to stop the wheelchair scam? Simply put, the scam wasn't big enough. 
In 2013, power wheelchairs accounted for just 2% of Medicare's equipment spending, and equipment spending accounted for just 3% of Medicare's $248 billion outpatient spending, and outpatient spending was less than half of Medicare's total spending. So in the grand universe of Medicare's money, it was microscopic. From 1999 to 2014, Medicare spent $8.2 billion paying for power wheelchairs and scooters for millions of people, and they honestly have no idea how much of that money was paid out to scammers. In recent years, Medicare has changed the way they handle wheelchair claims, and the total spent on wheelchairs has dropped significantly. Many of the criminals involved in those wheelchair scams were caught and prosecuted. But many of the clever ones stayed off radar and sort of just disappeared. That's it for today's episode. If you find these scam videos interesting or helpful to you, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you can be alerted every time I post a new scam. Remember, hearing about it just may save you from falling for it. So until next time, keep your eyes open for scams.